What's up, everybody? This is Trista. Please subscribe to this league. Tap the bell, comment below, and give us a like. What did we witness Wednesday night, Marty? Was that a was that a comeback? Was it an implosion? I mean, it, it was both? just so hard to watch. <laughs> like it was. I, I had Sixers. I was a Sixers better, and uh, they let me down. I don't know if was it a birth of the superstar and Trey Young or was it the the beginning of a franchise about to be dismantled? Because <laughs> it felt to me like a little bit of both. I'm not sure exactly what we saw. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my mind around it. Yeah. But I know that it was historic. I know, Marty, you always tell me that I'm too dramatic. But this is very, very bad. This is very, very, very bad. It, 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 it's as bad a look as that franchise could possibly have. As, as bad as it could look. We just talked about this exact scenario with Rich Hoffman. Mike. Yeah. No, he we did. said chaos, a uh, catastrophe. Those were the two words he used. Chaos and catastrophe. I would say I have the ability to be dramatic without any repercussions from the world. I think it's time to just who knows. Let's look at it, though, from both perspectives. First, let's take the Hawks. If you're a Hawks fan. I mean, this has got to be like one of the most memorable memorable games in franchise history, right? Like Trey Young, there is now zero doubt Trey Young is that guy. Oh yeah, he's he's arrived. He is he has ascended. 30, 39 and seven in the biggest game of his career. Like when you need Trey Young to step up, be nails. He fucking cooked Ben Simmons. Cooked him. You could you literally had the entire Sixers organization say, "Hey, our entire goal." is to stop Trey Young. We have three guys, and an all-NBA guys, Matisse Thibel, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons. They're all yeah. locked in on Trey, and Trey had 39-7. and seven. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. Could not be stopped. You're talking about a guy 6'1", Trey Young. Generous 6'1". Yeah, no. And he's getting guarded by a guy that's 6'10", and he's still got almost 40 points? I would say that's very impressive. What did Ben say if they let me be physical? Yeah, if they let someone? me be 6'10". Yeah. I'll be very good if they let me be 6'10". And you know what? Trey Young knew exactly how to do it. He's like, I'm just going to just gonna just <laughs> stop short and get my body into him. He had a lot of guys in foul trouble. He put the Hawks into the bonus by himself. 17 for 19 from the line when the entire league says, oh, Trey Young, all he does is shoot threes. And he had 10, he had 10 for 17 in the mid-range. 17 shots in the midi. His floaters are sick. Unstoppable. I have to apologize. Like, I was never really a Trey Young fan. Like, I thought he was good, of course. But, like, I'm like, ah. I didn't see him leading a team in the playoffs. No. Yeah, no. Could anybody? Like, you wouldn't have been surprised if he, like, faltered. Yeah. He's a young kid. First time in the playoffs. His organization has traditionally been trash, except for the one Budenholzer year. Right, With, like, yeah. Teague as the leader, right? And all of a sudden, he's like, the villain at Madison Square Garden. He's shushing Philly fans. He's literally beaten them twice in Philly. Yeah, no, for him to be doing it this early is, be a, yeah, it's beyond surprising. Yeah, I don't think I've changed my mind about anybody faster. <laughs> where I was like, wow, I just thought he was a chucker, like a fake Steph Curry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's the maestro. And another apology, Nate McMillan. Yikes. Gotta talk about he it. He looks very... <laughs> 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 When you're down 26 points and you were down 18 the game before and you can instill confidence in a bunch of young men who have never been there before to come out of the depths of hell. You're in a well, like a swampy ass dark well. And he just tells you like, no, it's OK. Just like keep going. And they are coming back and winning those games on the road? I have to say, like, that's very impressive. It's impressive as that's, fuck, yeah. That's like high-level coaching mm -hmm. and psychological coaching, not even just X's and O's, and a scheme to get Trey Young fucking 40 points? I mean, Kevin Herter had zero points. Yeah. Lou Williams put some respect on Lou Williams lemon too. Pe lemon pepper Lou. Yeah, no, he was awesome. Yeah. Like, and uh, Nate McMillan's decisions to ride with him. Cause he hasn't been closing out games. No. And yeah, he was like, yeah, this dude's hot. Yeah. And everybody knows when Lou Williams gets hot and he's scoring buckets, he's yeah. like Jamal Crawford. Just You're let there. him continue yeah. to play. Uh -huh. He was 34 years old. And as soon as he got traded to Atlanta, the world, he was like ready to retire. 
<laughs> he said, like, I'm done. I'm not trying to leave the Clippers organization. And then that Rondo for Lou Williams swap. Rondo's getting DMPs. Lou Williams is winning games on the road in Philly. Yeah, I think Rondo played like eight minutes last night. <laughs> he became a joke in Atlanta for breaking COVID pro- protocol <laughs> to get at a strip club to get wings. And everyone was like, oh, Lou Williams returns to Atlanta. This is so funny. And he's like, really contributing. Oh, yeah. Really contributing. Bogdanovich had six points in 21 minutes. And he had 13 points, Lou Williams, in the fourth quarter alone. 15, two, and three. Woo. Woo. So impressive from the Hawks. But Jesus Christ, as, as far as the Sixers go. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's so bad. How do you... There was somebody on Twitter that we work with who I will not say his name. They were up 26. And he said, I think it's time for the Sixers to rest Joel Embiid the rest of the game. I can't tell you how happy that tweet made me. Because I was like, this is it. This is the Hawks chance. Like, he's going to be so sick. And he's such, you know, all these Sixers fans, they think they're so fucking good. They think that they should win everything. They think the organization is better than it is. Their team is better than it is. Everybody's mad at me because I called that organization and that team overrated when they're the number one seed in the East. They are. I mean, are they not? Are they not overrated? They're underperforming right now. What does that mean, though? It means teams have figured out how to scheme against them. Which means what? When you're the number one seed in the East and you underperform. What does it mean? You know I don't like dealing in absolutes this way. <laughs> <laughs> I've already said it was, it's as bad a look for this team that they could ever have. Like everything went wrong that everyone's been saying about them for years. Uh, it was bad. It was terrible. It was a, yeah, it was a meteor crash. It was a, me- it was a meteor crash. We are witnessing what I thought I was going to see from the Celtics organization. Like this is how bad it is. Like just... Mark my words, June 17th, in the offseason, in the offseason, we're going to see major changes. And I'm not talking about just Ben Simmons, because you're not getting, you're not getting a boatload for Ben Simmons. What do you think you're getting right now? The whole world knows he's fucking trash from the free throw line, and he's not going to shoot. He has a shooting sleeve, doesn't need it, right? Yeah, we're going to need some Maury magic. I don't know. It's actually interesting. That would be a fun segment to just talk about Ben Simmons trade scenarios. I think he's a negative asset. Eesh. Right the second. I mean, just take a mental picture of where this team is now, Sixer fans. It's not going to be like this in 12 months from now. I promise you that. And what I would say is also, you've gone 20 years in a rebuild. 20 years rebuilding this organization. Trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. And you get to the Eastern Conference Finals. T- I mean, tough Kawhi shot. Tough. H- hate it. Hate to see that. And then you've got to rebuild again like 24 months later for who knows how long. Um. Everybody else besides Embiid and Seth Curry, not one human on the Sixers scored one bucket in the second half besides those two. Yep, That's maybe one of the most impressive stats I've ever heard. Yeah, I think it, I saw something about it. Like it was the only it was the first time in like 20 years that only two players had scored in a half in a playoff game. Something like that. That's that is astounding. Not scored. Made a field goal. But yeah, everyone else trash. Tobias trash. Shake trash. Cork Moss trash. And of course, Ben Simmons trash. Nowhere to be found. Four for 12 from the line. Nate McMillan, to his credit, playing hacky, hack a Ben down 25. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I actually like it when you're down more this than person. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just disrupts the flow of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. It just makes them so angry, too. Yeah. Had to, <laughs> Doc had to, had to bench Ben. I mean, it's a tremendous mental move. Like, we're just going to, I mean, just going to foul you. You're up 30, but we're going to foul you every time. And he's going to, and that's now in Ben's head. The world is making it so much worse, but I mean, I don't even know what you do. Doc had a funny quote. I thought about it. He was like, oh, when he's making them, we'll leave him in. But when he's not, but when he's not making them, we have to take him out. It's like, well, when well, I, he hasn't been making them, he's, like, <laughs> he's missed more, he's missed more. And I don't like, and I don't love bagging on Ben it, exactly the way you do, but his free throw shooting, he deserves it. Like he's missed more free throws than I think. All, not all the remaining teams in the playoffs, but like three or all four. But, yeah, all but there was like, she had seven less missed free throws than all of them combined. Something <laughs> oh, like that. I didn't that. know that. Oh. We cannot g- give love to Nate without holding Doc accountable. Yes. Yeah, 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 I agree. Doc Rivers could be possibly the best worst coach we've ever seen. <laughs> 
This one's going to sting, Doc Rivers. I promise you. This one's going to come back to bite you. These two games, back to back, going to come back to bite you. Promise. Because this is legacy altering shit. You know, like what we said about CP3, where this season has solidified or, or solidified for the fans of CP3 who he is. And for folks who hated him, changed the whole narrative around. Yeah. I think for anyone who was on the fence about Doc Rivers and was placing all the blame, like myself, actually, this was me. I was placing all the blame on PG. All the blame. Three, up 3-1, side of the backboard, gave it up to Denver. Now I'm starting to think, hmm, <laughs> Doc Rivers. I don't know. This is a guy who had KG, Paul Pierce, Rondo, Ray Allen, bunch of great role players, Jeff Green included. Couldn't only get just measly win. One, one measly championship. Not to say... It's not hard to win a championship, but that is a fucking stacked roster. Yeah. I mean, they were there. I think that they made the East Finals like... They were there. Yeah. They were in the... They were contending, but they did not win. Yeah, no, 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 no. I love taking credit away from that Sixers team. I mean, that Celtics team. I hated those guys. Yeah. And then the Clippers with Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin. Not even a sniff. Not even a finals appearance. Not even a conference finals appearance. Not even appearance. a conference finals appearance. They had one, one game five in like forever until two nights ago. Then choked away that 3-1 lead with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. I mean, it just must be discussed. Tough. Tough look. There's a chance Doc, fire, Doc Rivers gets fired. There is a chance. It's not a high likelihood, but this is very bad for Doc Rivers. Yeah, no, very, certainly not good. Very, very bad. Uh, the, think about this, though. The, the roster, the franchise, like I said, was under construction for two decades. And as soon as they come together where you're a fan and you like enjoy some semblance of expectations of success and it just like all slips away and you have to rebuild again. You've got a center with two bad knees now. He was grabbing the reconstructed one two nights ago. He just gets gassed every fourth quarter now. As much as I love Embiid, like he just, he, you, you can tell. Like, His health is an issue. Yeah. Like we've said, he's now got back spasms again. What is the status of Embiid's health long term? The same as it's always been. Uncertain, very uncertain. Now you've got Ben Simmons. Things are more clear to everyone about who he is. So what do you have, really? You just have Matisse Thibel and some like Ty you have Tyrese Maxey and and what? Like I don't even know what they do because you're not getting any picks. So if you do a full rebuild, you're gonna have to trade Embiid. I don't know. There's so much. I'm not saying that they will. <laughs> I would never say that they will. But like if you're gonna go through a rebuild, that's the only way you get picks. No, that's the only way. Unless you're trade, I mean, you'd have to trade Tobias and Ben in a package and you probably get two first rounders, three first rounders max. And you probably have to like get some bloated contract back two bloated contracts back. I don't know. Now your back's against the wall. Best case scenario for you is a game seven. And that's more mileage on Embiid. And in terms of what could have been, we can't talk about the Sixers without not talking about Harden. Like, imagine not pulling the trigger because of Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. That's yeah, bad. Yeah. That's Who tough, played tough one, one minute in with one of the most critical games in the last two years of Philadelphia hoops. So everybody knows things are bad, but Trey Young is going to be, I would say, responsible as much as Dame is for rebuilding OKC. That is what Trey Young is doing <laughs> to the Philadelphia 76ers. So. You tell me. Sixers are headed for a brutal offseason and the process. Distrust it. Uh, trust the process. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. <laughs> when will we hear him say that again? I don't know. <laughs>